Hi and welcome to this 8 minute tutorial on how to get started with WordPress on your local machine. The first question you may ask is why would I want to install WordPress locally? The answer is simple really. This allows you to test WordPress and build websites without web hosting. If you ultimately want to host your website live on the World Wide Web, you will need web hosting of course, but for now, let's get started with setting up a local environment on your computer with local by flywheel. The first thing you'll want to do is head over to Local's website at localwp.com. Local's the brainchild of the guys at Flywheel. They provide managed WordPress hosting from as little as $13 per month. The cool thing about this magical combination is that you can connect your local WordPress site to your live hosting. More on that in a separate tutorial. If you want to know more about Flywheel, check out the link in the show notes below. Local is the number one WordPress development tool. It takes the guesswork out of setting up WordPress and lets you focus on building stunning websites. Start by clicking the download button. They'll need some information from you. As you can see, Local is available for Windows, Mac and Linux systems. Choose the version you need. For this tutorial, we'll use the version for Mac. Fill in your name, email address, phone number and click on Get It Now. The download should just take a few minutes depending on your internet connection. I've already done this, so we'll move right along. At the time of this recording, the latest version is 5.3.1. Once the download completes, click the DMG file and follow the instructions to install the application. I've already done this. After installation, go ahead and click on the application icon to open local. You should now see the sleek and simple interface. First, we'll head over to Local and Preferences to tune a few settings before we get started. Under Appearance, Behavior and Theme, you can choose whether you want Local in Light, Dark or Auto Mode. Note this is only available if your Mac is running Mac OS High Sierra or later. Next, down to New Site Defaults. Here you can set the environment to preferred or custom. I'll talk more about this later in this tutorial. Next you can enter your email address. This will act as the default admin address for all your future WordPress installations. Next you'll want to leave the domain suffix at .local. Think of this as the local version of a .com or .org or .net domain you'll probably get when you want to publish your site to the web. Next is the Sites Path. This is the location on your computer where all the installs and files of your WordPress sites will be stored. I recommend creating a specific folder somewhere on your hard drive for this purpose. For this tutorial I've created a folder named Local Website and added it to my favorites in Finder for easy access. These are all the settings you'll need for now. Click on Apply and save your changes and then close the preference pane. Back on your local admin panel, click on the big plus button to add a new local site. Fill in a name for your WordPress site. If you expand the advanced options menu, you'll notice that the local site domain has already been prefixed with your site name. The local site path will display the location we configured in preferences a moment ago and also append the folder it will save your website to at the end. The blueprint option is a topic for another tutorial. Simply put, think of it as starter templates for your future websites. Click continue. On the choose environment screen you'll get the option of selecting between either the preferred or the custom options as we saw from the preferences earlier. The preferred option basically follows the environment settings that the flywheel guys use on their hosting servers. This ensures that you can seamlessly synchronize your local website with its live counterpart if you use any web hosting package with Flywheel. The custom option allows you to select the PHP and MySQL database versions you want to use for your website. As an added security measure, you'll always want to go with the latest versions. You will however need to consider compatibility with any themes, page builders and plugins that you will be using for your website. We'll use the custom option for this tutorial. 
Note that if this is the first time you're using the PHP and MySQL versions you've selected, you'll be prompted that the application needs to download and install these components to enable the environment. After selecting the versions you want, click continue. Lastly, you'll need to provide your WordPress installation login details, username and password. Note these down as you'll need them to log into your WordPress dashboard later. The email will be populated already with the email address you filled in the preferences earlier. Under the advanced option menu, you have the option to select whether your site is multi-site or not. WordPress multi-site is a WordPress feature that allows you to run multiple WordPress sites from within one WordPress installation. Here you have the options to set this up as either a subdirectory or subdomain configuration. This is a topic for another tutorial, so we'll leave the multi-site option set to no. Click on add site to start the installation. This won't take too long, depending on the time it takes to download the environment components. You may be prompted to supply your system admin password. This is to allow the installation to make changes to your directory and install the necessary components. Fill in your password and click OK. Once the installation completes, you'll see all the information about your installation like the web server, PHP, MySQL and WordPress versions in the panel under the Overview tab. Now if you head over to the Finder and navigate to the folder with your website name and into the App and then Public folder, you'll see all the WordPress installation files and folders there. This simulates the root and public underscore HTML folders on your live host. Back to the config folder, inside here you'll see all the folders related to the components required to host your site locally, like web server, database and PHP. Nothing for you to do here, but it's nice to know what's under the hood. Back in your local admin panel, click the view site button on the right, you'll be directed to the front end of your website that is now hosted locally on your Mac, in the folders you've seen just a moment ago. This will be a vanilla WordPress install with the latest version of WordPress and the default WordPress theme activated, loaded in your default browser. Again, back to the local admin panel, if you click on the admin button you'll be directed to your site's login page. Fill in the username and password you selected earlier and voila, you've just installed WordPress on your Mac. Time to take it for a spin, build a beautiful website and while you're at it, build a few more. Try out Elementor, the best website builder for WordPress. It's free. Check out the link in the show notes below. I've included a few more links to some of the themes, plugins and tools I use myself. Try one, try them all and happy building. For more tutorials on WordPress, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell to get notified of all of our latest content. Thanks for watching. See you next time.